everyone. This is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you a very common question, uh, really asked by uh, a few of my students: the half diminished chord versus the full diminished chord. So the half diminished and the full diminished have different functional harmony around them they resolve differently and that's what we are here to do and uh, as some of you may know if you follow the channel regularly i tend to talk a lot about minor progressions and minor music composition in general so uh, i tend to use these diminished chords a lot the half and the full to make music that way you can also see some of my riffs filter them by minor in the website which we have and you'll get a lot of this minor feel which has a lot of these diminished chords so in the lesson first off i'm going to talk about the theory behind the chords how you can build it then i'm going to talk about how you can use it to resolve music not just for a particular genre like jazz but in general we look at how the chords are designed in order to resolve to wherever they need to resolve okay so before we get cracking it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button there's a bell icon for regular notifications and leave us a like leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn and uh, there are notes on patreon for this lesson as well as other lessons in the past and which we are going to do in the future do consider uh, being a patreon on patreon.com let's get cracking so i'm going to take the key of d or the note d and look at how we can form the chords so first of all the half diminished chord so the half diminished chord is formed first of all both the chords are diminished chords with another interval added on to them so what is that other interval that's what we are going to figure out in the lesson so you start with the you're figuring out the d half diminished chord which is d and now you build a diminished chord so what's the formula to build a diminished chord you do minor third what's a minor third well it's tricky to show you step by step well it is one two three steps from anywhere but in reality a minor third should just be remembered by you so d to f is a minor third and then from f you build another minor third to give yourself a flat or you can think of it as a d minor chord with a flat 5 where the perfect fifth a got flattened to the a flat so that's your diminished vibe and now to add to this to make it a half diminished we add a minor 7th in fact we also call this another name for this chord is the minor 7th flat 5 chord you'll find that used a lot more in charts and you also use a greek symbol phi for the chord of phi for it that one okay so diminished plus minor 7th a quick trick to get yourselves a minor 7th would be it's an octave minus 2 there we go octave minus 2 gives you a minor 7 so in reality you need to know these intervals very well just on your fingertips by eye by by mind you should know this really well so uh, what's a half diminished chord again or a minor 7 flat 5 it's a diminished chord with a minor 7th or it's a minor chord or minor 7th chord with a flat 5 whichever way you look at it you can get it that way and it's interesting to know that when you invert a minor 7th flat 5 let's say when you play it on f which is the next inversion you get a minor 6th chord slightly different flavor but very mysterious and minor 6th so minor 7 flat 5 or a half diminished is also a minor 6th chord in disguise you could think of it that way and a minor 7th flat 5 exists in the major scale if you think about it so if you look at the e flat major scale you'll realize that the 7th degree of any scale will form a diminished chord but when you extend the harmony diminished extension 
minus 7 flat 5. So the minus 7 flat 5 is there in the major scale in the 7th degree. But the other one, which I'm going to tell you, may not be there in the major scale because you, you don't have a... You don't have that note, right? So that's where the other chord comes in, which is called as the fully diminished chord or the whole dim, full diminished chord. So how do we form that? It's just a cluster of minor thirds. So if you take again the stack from D, a good way, I think, to form it would be minor third, minor third, minor third. Three minor thirds gives you a full diminished chord. So... That's the chord. The reason why a minor third, minor third, minor third combo will work is because this is a symmetric chord. That means it's a, it's the same chord when you reverse it, so or invert it rather. So if you play D, F, A flat, B, and now start with F, this chord is called the F diminished seventh chord. Then if you start it with G sharp or A flat, that's a G sharp diminished seventh chord, same notes. That's a B diminished seventh chord, same notes. So you need to remember that within a pack of four, and if one of them is a D diminished seventh chord, then you invert it and you just get the other three diminished seventh chords. So in total, you have 12 diminished seventh chords, but they are all built through three shapes or three note combinations so do check out the notes in the patreon pdf you'll find it there so shape one gives you d diminished seventh shape two gives you f diminished seventh shape three gives you g sharp or a flat diminished seventh shape four gives you b diminished seventh or c flat diminished seventh now this is not the property with the case of the half diminished chord or the minor 7 flat 5 wherein when you invert a minor 7 flat 5 I told you this earlier you get a minor 6th chord so you're not going to get the same chord you're going to get some other chord and it, it doesn't work symmetrically as the diminished 7th so there are how many diminished 7th chords to learn in total well the answer is a sum total of 3 because you can invert them and you get 3 into 4 12 while the half diminished chord you have to learn all 12 all 12 of them are unique so it's in my opinion it's a lot easier to to play this diminished 7th chord on the piano than it is to play the half diminished God. It's just a bit different on the hand because of that additional stretch there. So we need to be careful. I often have made that mistake and probably still do till this day where I tend to play like a uh, a diminished seventh chord instead of a half or vice versa and the music can sound really bad at times you know so uh, let's look at the use cases of these two chords the the way at least i would like to present them in this lesson there may be a lot more use cases as well uh, which we have which we'll not be able to cover in this video now the half diminished chord the way i like to use it Again, I'm a huge fan of minor. You can use the half diminished chord to be the two five the two of the two five one in the minor key. In the minor key, the two is not a minor seventh. It's not That's not how it's designed. That would have been in the major scale. D minor seventh, G seventh, C major seventh. But the half diminished chord is that. And this is directly promoting the C harmonic minor, which is eventually going to happen. D half diminished or minor 7 flat 5. That goes to the 5 of the scale, which is G7. And then it goes back to C minor. Okay. La, D half diminished. Do, do, do. It's a dominant and then the minor so the half diminished chord doesn't resolve to the tonic well it could but it form it wants to kind of go to the five it's a bit stronger there So 
let's see a half diminished while a whole diminished no which is this d diminished seventh just goes directly to c minor it's almost like a dominant chord and a good way to prove that is if you play the d diminished seventh chord now form the dominant chord of the c minor scale what is the dominant the five right play the five and it really sweetly or beautifully wants to go to the c minor and there's another few tricks up the diminished seventh chord sleeve it doesn't only resolve like d diminished seventh d minor 7 flat 5 resolved to g 7th which resolved to c minor but then the d diminished 7th chord goes to c minor scale it can also go to three other scales so in total a diminished 7th chord a full diminished 7th chord takes you to four scales let me show you that uh, uh, that option right here so you play the chord one way to kind of train your ear what is the next scale right is to drop any of these four notes down by one semitone or down by one half step so i'll start with the top finger b dropping b by b to b flat and now you realize that b flat is actually a b flat dominant 7th chord where does b flat dominant 7th want to go it is the 5 of the e flat So now if you just play the D diminished seven it it goes really well to E flat major it could also go to la ra na 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 which is a dominant seventh in this guys going to B flat so it kind of goes to C minor and the journey continues the same strategy play the chord drop now i'm i already showed you with b dropping by one you can now drop the g sharp or a flat down to g that gives you your c minor which i already showed you or goes to c major as well now i'm now going to drop this f note which is the sex the second note what is that form it forms a e dominant seventh chord e is the five of the a melody but to feel that it's always good to drop by one step drop one note of the diminished seventh chord by one step it kind of helps your ear and the theory to be like oh yeah it's e7 which is the five of the a or a minor or a major it's a beauty of the chord it can go to the minor scale or the major scale and we have one more uh, movement or one more path of this chord no and that's a what's that d flat dominant 7th or c sharp uh, dominant 7th no i just drop the d d to the c sharp c sharp is the five of the f sharp minor or f sharp major so it's a beautiful chord it can go to so many scales 
you think about it, it can actually go to eight scales, right? It's going to four major and the same names minors as well. So I think that's a huge distinction between a full diminished chord and a half diminished chord. A half diminished chord seventh chord is more used as a cadence you'll use it more as a two five one resolution it's more rooted to a key like a major or a minor harmonic minor most more commonly while a full diminished chord is like a dominant chord a dominant chord wants to resolve to a tonic so it's a very unstable chord and uh, you use it a lot for runs you'll use it a lot in gypsy jazz flamenco music a lot of minor music, classical music, we've heard it. We've even heard it in dance music, you know, uh, like I Will Survive. The first chord has that, uh, you know, it has that diminished seventh chord. So, um, yeah, ho ho hopefully you guys found the lesson useful. Hopefully you have the distinction between the two. So a final follow up to this would be, Practice your half diminished seventh chords as two five one movements. That would be D minor seven flat five, G seventh going to C minor, and practice your full diminished seventh chords. Drop one to down a step and resolve it to the major key or the minor key. And then drop the other one. Minor. Drop the other one. Or minor. Drop the last one. incredible chord you guys should definitely use it and uh, let me know in the comments if you found the lesson useful if you have any questions if you'd like to learn something in the future we'd be happy to consider it again this is jason zach from nathaniel school of music if you'd like to learn something more at the intermediate and advanced levels you can go to our website fill up a form or reach us on email or whatsapp and uh, one of us can help you forward with your admission Right, guys. Thanks a ton. Cheers. Catch you in the next one.